right to You Asked For It and your host, Jack Smith. This is Lobo 1 calling Lobo 2. Come in, please. Lobo 2 to Jack Smith. This is Mike McCullough. Go ahead, Jack. Will you read the request letter I handed you before you took off, Mike? Sure will. I have it right here. It's postmarked Phillipsburg, New Jersey, and addressed to the You Asked For It show. Dear Jack Smith, up and down the wilderness stretches of the United States and Canada, a peacetime army of men fight a constant and never-ending war with one of our worst enemies, the forest fire. They are called the smoke jumpers. May we see these men in action? Thank you, Miss Elsie F. Weller. We're approaching the jump area, Jack. Over to you and out. We're speaking to you from Missoula, Montana, where the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Service maintains its largest smoke jumper base. In a matter of seconds, the men in that old Ford trimotor plane will be over the forest fire. It's a new fire, only a few hours old, but it must be killed and fast before it destroys thousands of acres of precious timber. That's the job of these highly trained forest firefighters. How does a man become a smoke jumper? Well, let's go back to the beginning. Elsie Weiler, you asked for it. Typical college kids to begin with, and they're plenty green. So first it's conditioning, as rough as any boot camp, over some of the toughest obstacle courses ever devised, like the v trough. Over the ramp to practice the rollover. They'll use that plenty later on. Through the tires, feet up like a football rookie, only this is deadly serious. Just when they get to slow down, they wish they were back running. This backbreaker is called the rack, for rather obvious reasons. The overhead ladder to toughen the arms. This is the greatest measure of safety, perfect physical condition. From a parachute, you never know how you'll land. The trampoline teaches some measure of control. At last, they're issued jumpsuits. Seems kind of funny for rugged guys like these to wear girdles, but there they are. Pads in the knees, the shoulders, and elbows. A high collar protects against tree limbs and rocks. Headpiece like a football helmet, a steel mask to protect the face. The swing landing trainer simulates an actual parachute landing. The first crack at it is something to remember. The instructor can let you drop any time he likes, but the student never knows when. is to roll and absorb the shock if you can. The swing trainer teaches you how to land, and the tower, or the gallows, as some guys call it, gives you an idea of how to feel when your chute opens in midair. It shocks you at first, then you learn to like it. If a guy gets hung up in a tree, he lowers himself to the ground with a nylon line after he learns how. But the big day is that first jump. Instructor Hugh Fowler watches like a mother hen. Mike, uh, turn around and face the spot. You're headed away from it. You're headed just right. Keep heading in the same direction that you are, and you should be in on it. Mike, you're just about ready to land. Now get your feet together and keep your hands on those risers. Good landing, and what a thrill. Then right back to the classroom. Watching films of smoke jumpers, they learn everything there is to know about this precarious business. There's a technique, even to bailing out of a low-flying copter onto a wooded mountaintop. They'll run this film over and over again. They study veteran jumpers from a high-flying plane. In slow motion, they see how their chutes will unfurl and billow out over their heads. The shock of the chute opening makes them all wince. Even in slow motion, it seems you can actually feel that sudden jolt. Well, now let's go back to Mike McCullough and his comrades in that trimotor plane. Full-fledged smoke jumpers now on an actual mission. We'll hear from the scene of the action.
short distance from the fire, moving up as fast as we can. They're dropping more men all the time. More equipment's being parachuted in, and we can sure use it. The fire's in some headway. It's mostly brush. They may have got here on time. Oh, there goes some deer. Yeah, there's a bear. Most of the animals can get out. Anyway, they can run. That's something the trees can't do. Oh, I'm here to tell you, Jack, this is no glamour job. The heat's almost unbearable. Those guys don't stop for a second. The fire's confined to a pretty small area. And Been here about three hours now. Looks to me like the job's just about over. A little flare up here and there. You'd never think these guys started training only a month ago, would you? Job of digging and covering up now, and no one leaves until the last spark is gone. Lobo one, Mike McCullough to Lobo two, Jack Smith. Over. Come in, Mike. It's all over. The fire's out. We're headed home. Over and out. Come on, guys, let's go. Well, it'll be a long walk home, but these firefighting, parachuting men of the U.S. Forest Service can feel justly proud. They saved acre upon acre of precious timber with their speed and courage. Elsie Weller, thanks to you, we learned just what it takes to be a smoke jumper. You asked for it.